Welcome uh, to this uh, edition of Fiki Chat with Chair. Um, we are delighted to have with us uh, today Dr. Alok Troy, who is the chairman of the Medica uh, Group of Hospitals. It is the largest uh, chain of hospitals in Eastern India. Uh, in the last 20 years, he has actually evolved into a reputed hospital management specialist with unsurpassed technical expertise. Uh, he has actually uh, set up hospitals in Bihar, Jharkhand, Assam, Odisha. And of course, he is a regular uh, faculty guest at present at uh, various national and international healthcare forums. Uh, we are delighted that he is also the uh, chair of the Fiki Health Services uh, Committee. And his specialization, interestingly, is nuclear cardiology. So welcome to this uh, edition of uh, chat uh, with Chair uh, Dr. Alok Roy. Thank you. Um, I recently uh, read your article on the health world, which is the Economic Times, and I appreciate the way uh, you wish to connect healthcare with technology by using digital platforms and creation of flexible workspace uh, work for both healthcare workers and uh, look at the, uh, you know, to be prepared for the infectious disease uh, uh, diseases. But I think let me first begin this chat uh, today by asking you, you know, during the COVID, there was a huge concern. A lot of the hospitals and the, especially the smaller hospitals were faced with closure. Uh, many uh, different specialities and regular hospitals were not being uh, fully utilized. What does it look like now uh, post, uh, you know, the opening up of the, uh, and the unlock phases that are going on? Unlock phase uh, has replaced COVID patients with normal patients, but still the fear is very high. And uh, number of patients are not as many as we were used to. But there's a recovery up to 60 to 75%. And uh, we hope that once vaccination gets in, get going and there's a more number of people getting immunized, more people will come forward. But it looks like that's still two or, two or three months away for hospital to get fully busy. Okay, but it is on the recovery path and even the smaller hospitals, I hope they're opening up uh, going forward. Now you talked about the vaccination, you know, you said the vaccination seems to be the hope to getting the economy back on track. Uh, if I were to uh, ask you for your views on the government uh, strategy regarding the uh, vaccine candidates, uh, priority groups, uh, as well as distribution plan. In, in the phase one, they actually focused on healthcare workers and frontline workers. So how do you think that went and you know, uh, what are your views on that? Actually, ideally, they should have opened for everybody else. But obviously, they had a, uh, they were not too sure about the stock and the availability. So they went for the most uh, targeted population that was healthcare worker and uh, the, those who were in the front line rather than not only healthcare, the front line like police and uh, municipalities and all that. It was understandable, but it clearly demonstrates not enough vaccine. If there's enough vaccine, just open it up. Entire world will lap it up and they'll start injecting people. But that didn't happen. And government wanted to control it because of the short supply. Understandable. Now, uh, so their strategy of providing inoculation in a stepwise manner is a, is a, it's probably the call of the time. And uh, I mean, nothing much can be said about that. Other than that, that was the only way available to us, and we had very little role to play in that. So, how successful has phase one been? You know, you're in the healthcare. The sector have all frontline healthcare workers and other healthcare workers have got vaccinated. Uh, are they feeling a little more confident now, or how is the phase one gone? <laughs> See, initially, uh, when the COVID came, they were already scared. But after almost a year of battling, they got immune to COVID. Most of them, they got so used to it, uh, 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 fighting it, that they kind of got immune to it, and they responded well. I would say that. Uh, Healthcare frontline workers rather responded very well to the initial immunization. There were some skeptics, and uh, there will always be some. So, other than that, the, most of them responded and responded positively. So, it was a good response to start with. So, now we have gone to phase two, where uh, I think uh, people with the age, age above 60 and those with 45 and four morbidities, right? Uh, are uh, being looked at. Uh, do you feel that this is, are we on the right track? Uh, 
and um, you know we initially started off with restricting the private sector to only those who were impaneled with cghs or were providing ayushman bharat uh, you know uh, services but now they've opened up to all and uh, do you feel that now we are on the right track as far as this age group and this population group goes we are on right track but going very slowly <laughs> see uh, it is a war in a war you don't work night 10 to 4 saturday sunday off uh, you can't do beyond evening hours that's absurd when you have to inoculate in your own words 30% that is the 30 plus crore population of this country you have to go like a war you should have uh, vaccinate 24 hours who were is willing to who has capability who were is bear with all we would like to private uh, world will like to inoculate as many as people because our survival depends on that economy depends on that but the government is still stuck in that same bureaucratic fashion where 9 to 5 10 to 5 for us to ask permission from 8 to 8 to inoculate is a big issue at least in bengal and jharkhand i don't know about other states but Beng- in these two states we have we just can't make a headway with them that please allow us to vaccinate 24 hours people should be able to walk in Uh, somebody children are working somewhere they can't come in the daytime they can come only in the evening time so all those conveniences if we build in and tackle it on a war footing then probably we can do more it's on right track but it's going very slowly about it so if i were to extend that format because i think for immunization or for other uh, kind of medical uh, services uh, there is no actual restriction uh, of timings uh, you know i mean is I mean, just from a lighter note i mean babies are born even at midnight right so you know i mean hospitals operate at 24 by 7 yes so why why do you think that this restriction was uh, put in place uh, initially were there some doubts and fears in the mind of the authorities or you know what was the rational behind it your 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 understanding i think the reason lies in because both government and private are inoculating and the, you can't push government to work beyond 5 o'clock they will have their saturday sundays whereas for us working 24 hours is a is a norm not a kind of a, a exception so and also 60% of the population depends on private stakeholders for the treatment so they are coming to us they are flocking us and government want to have a controlled release of the vials and that's uh, probably right also though we would have asked them to release it uh, to the like you can get a pneumococcal in- inoculation for pneumonia any time from anywhere just pick up a bottle and take it but here you have to upload it because government wants to know how many people have been inoculated that's why they are going through the institutions which is understandable but two things i like to say where government has to really think very carefully if you want to do it on a war footing first they have to increase the working hours for us provide us in a controlled manner we are okay with that you give us the vaccination vaccines every day in the morning we'll take it from you we'll inject we'll give you hisab in the evening next day morning give us fresh it's okay with us what we need to do that lot of elderly population which is most vulnerable cannot come old age home there's a 100 yards from us is the old age home where there are 100 inmates everybody is above 80 they can't come how do i go there we have spoken to people that can we go there can we go to the high rise where people are living there still the elderly can we inject them there because they are most vulnerable when the children will go to school they are the one who will bring infection nothing will happen to children and at the, the oldies goldies will die so that is something which government has to truly think that we need to fight this on a war basis not on a just an inoculation basis you could do the uh, polio vaccination on sundays and all that once in a while where a lot of celebrity came and talked about it but here you have to make sure that everybody is given and that would think of more aggressive approach than what we have adopted at this point of time so you know dr dr Rai, one of the uh, fears in the mind of uh, everybody here is that uh, you know there would be black marketing there would be crowds there would be unmanageable you know might law and order problems and all uh now given the experience in phase 1 and phase 
Uh, do you think now the, the 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 public is sufficiently aware and willing to come in an orderly manner, uh, etc., in this, or that is, you know, do we still have to, you know, tightly regulate it and then ensure that these things don't happen? See, black marketing is there something very innate with our system. Some part may be happening, and we don't know. I have no evidence to that, but we do hear once in a while that so and so center injected to some people here and there. But compared to the larger interest, that's very small. So regulation, I understand. So you operate through people who are dependable and reliable. Don't throw it on a pharmacies. Don't give it to the pharmacies. Don't give it to the uh, people whom you can't control. But people like uh, institutions, this country has some of the best chain, which can be compared with the, any chain in the world, Apollo, or Fortis, uh, Medanta, there are so many of them, Narayana. We are here in the East, we cover the entire East. All of us are uh, uh, socially conscious. We uh, stick to the rules and we will upload and let the government know the right way of doing things. What we are saying that that use the dependable people for going faster and going to the houses. That's what uh, they should think and use it. Don't make it uh, in a very small nursing home. Okay, give them a limited. Okay, you can only work uh, because nursing homes may not be may not have that kind of capability. But for us who have got eight hundred nurses, and we don't have a full occupancy, we have only seventy percent occupancy. Thirty percent of our people are uh, available to inject. That means at least two hundred fifty people are available to inject on a daily basis. Two hundred fifty. If everybody does. Uh, one one hundred. We're talking about two thousand five hundred in uh, twenty five thousand injections a day. That comes. You can count it. How many in a month? We can do just in one hospital. Just possible, and we are willing to, because we know that that will only help people and us both. It's a win win. Okay. So, in your mind, are there any shortages of any resources uh, for vaccination or any other challenges? Uh, to actually scale it up, you said from zero to 25,000 a day, you know, are there any, is there, is there a vaccine shortage or is there a shortage of, uh, you know, other, any other shortage, uh, given the fact also that we have to, you know, they have this thing of observing the person for 30 minutes, right, uh, post vaccination. So what, what is your experience and what have you seen so far? <clears throat> the second round of vaccination is far better than the first round. There are more willingness for people to come forward. As compared to frontline worker, these people are uh, are more reasonable. They want to. They are more keen. They are more inclined to get vaccinated. But they know that they are old, and any infection they may not be able to sustain it, and they may die. So the willingness is very high. Number one. Number two, that the uh, the safety of vaccination, the rather uh, uh, that the vaccine is safe, is very well established. It's beyond doubt that uh, these are safe vaccine. And inoculation is a very simple process. The, the waiting time is the, uh, you give them a cup of tea and by the time they have a coffee and finish it, 30 minutes gets over. So there is a, a, a process is very streamlined. And people have a fear. They know that this one will save their life for sure in case if they get uh, infected. So willingness is very high. I think the I don't know really that uh, what is if there's a shortage of vaccine is a reason. I don't think so. Because uh, 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 a vaccine shortage is not a reason. The reason is the thought process and the willingness to increase exponentially to vaccinate everybody in the country. Please remember, we just started at 60. There are much more younger people. Are, uh, they, the population of this country is uh, far young. By the time we reach to them, this year will pass by. The people whom we inoculated first, probably time will come to inoculate them again. So it's, a, it's, a, it's if you really want to reach fast to everybody, you have to move really fast. So, you know, at Fiki, we are getting a lot of requests uh, from uh, corporates for guidance on immunization of their employees. So, you know, I don't know if it's a fair question, you may not be aware of it, but if you can advise, what are the government's guidelines to private hospitals for cohort registrations uh, from such organizations? I think there's no, uh, government says, as long as they're uploaded on the COVID uh, platform, you can take anybody. 
There's no limitation that you can only take X, not Y, what that. I like what we do, like only Fiki had sent us a list of Lakshmi T or some 30, 20 people. We get all those people, uh, ask them to get onto the platform. For some reason, if they can't get onto the platform, we call them the hospital, we make them sit there and we just enter their uh, ourselves. We register uh, somebody there in IT who stand with them. Nowadays, this is very simple for youngsters. All the youngsters, 20, 25, 30 year old are entering into COVID platform like nobody's business. So they enter it for them and then uh, it, it gets over in less than seven, six, seven minutes. Then they are all uh, scheduled for injection. We inject them under an hour, they all leave hospital. Okay, so if, if I as an individual am registered on the COVID platform for a shot, then I got scheduled an appointment in a private hospital and I walk in, what needs to be done? Just uh, if they see, depends on how organized they are. Some places we are watching where people are standing and getting pushed and pulled and all that. Whereas what we do in East that the moment he enters, we make him sit on a chair. So then there's no pull and push. They, then they start shifting in a batch of 25, 30. So that way there is a complete controlled movement. And uh, uh, so they get inject and under an hour we are injecting and sending them home with all that crowd building up. We just open one more injection site, one more injection site. So we open multiple injection sites in the hospital and keep on taking them to that site. And uh, uh, like you have seen the Mela, you know, they put a string that keep on making the going them around and around in a circle. That's what we do as well. So there's no, everybody's sitting in different oh. locations. Yeah. <laughs> You know, one of the things that has come out from the first round that only a very uh, small percentage of the people who took the shot in the first round, uh, first shot, actually came back for their second uh, shot uh, going in there. Uh, you know, are you seeing a greater uptake uh, uh, in the second shot or there is some other thing that you're looking at? Actually, <clears throat> second shot dropouts are very few. Very, very few. Those who have made up their mind to the first shot, they're coming back. They keep on checking it. Sometimes there are delays. Somebody, uh, like I know somebody who had a first shot, but a uh, father fell sick in some other city. They went there. And so now he said to them, don't worry. Up to 45 days, you can be given second shot. Up to two months, you can give a second shot. Second shot, at the end of the day, is a more of a booster rather than the uh, 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 generator of uh, immunogenicity in you. So that uh, we accommodate them even after a gap of few days and they are coming back. The very, very few dropouts of second shot. So what would you be your, your view and your message be for the citizens uh, to encourage them to come for the shots in, in the second phase? Uh, and, do they, and do they need to be careful about anything going forward? My message to all our uh, uh, citizens are, take the shot. That's the only way to save you, sure short way of saving you from severity of infection and infection, both. There's nothing else. You can put on mask, you can do distancing, you can sanitize, but the only thing which will save you 100% from infection is vaccination. And uh, that's the attempt which is happening now. And uh, please join, don't miss it. You miss it at your peril. Don't miss it, come forward, get it done. And the entire country is willing, the government is willing, the world is willing to inject you. And it's not expensive. So it's, the cost is hardly a factor. If it is expensive, come to us, we'll find ways of giving you free, but must take it. So just one last um, uh, comment uh, message from you. You know, we started this where there was a kind of a not total trust in the in the in the private sector uh, uh, on this vaccination process. So, what did your message to be about saying that you know the private sector's commitment and you know uh, willingness to follow the process and systems and work in partnership with government? Private sector, private stakeholders in healthcare service delivery space is very committed, has been very committed. We have our own share of uh, black sheep. That is part of society. As society is divided, so there are some people in us also. But most of us want to contribute because there is something which, which is no option. If we had option of adopting a certain path and uh, avoiding this, probably that option would have been entertained or accepted. 
in in this pandemic there's no option but to get together and fight it out and we have done it very well in last one year the way government and private sector got together something i have not seen in last 45 years i've been in healthcare this is the first time when both of us got together the government and public sector and private sector and we jointly defeated the disease the pandemic now the last bit is left is vaccination i think we are committed we will not spare anything to ensure that we vaccinate people and god's uh, blessing we all will win together uh, thank you uh, dr alok roy for sharing the current revival stage in the healthcare sector and you know inching up to greater capacity utilization also your views on the government's choice of priorities in the phase 1 and phase 2 sharing with us how e- easy and simple for corporations to do cohort uh, registrations you are also your views and your encouragement to people to come forward to take the shot and finally building confidence in the private sector healthcare ecosystem in the country it was a pleasure talking to you, uh, to you. Uh, thank you keep well and keep safe thank you thank you very much Thanks for inviting. Thank you.